What made you interested in the uh, General So dish and of course uh, making this documentary? Uh, about 10 years ago, I was driving across the US on my way to make another film, and which was about corn, and stopped into a tiny town for the night. The only restaurant open was this Chinese restaurant, and my best friend and I found ourselves eating General So's chicken, yeah. as we always did. And there was just something about this town and this place and this time that made us both wonder, who was General So and why are we all eating his chicken uh, right. everywhere across this country in tiny towns and big cities? Um, and thought fancifully that that would be an interesting window onto the phenomenon of Chinese food in America, which is so ubiquitous in North America, really. Um, and that's how we got our start, kind of didn't get anywhere for a few years, eventually teamed up with Jennifer Eight Leaves, one of our producers, who uh, had gone and written a book about Chinese food in America, mm -hmm. including a whole chapter on General So. Mm -hmm. So armed with a lot of her research and contacts, we went out together to make a, a new film. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to get people, uh, restaurateurs, to talk about the General Cho chicken dish? Uh, it was a mix. I mean, I think you always find that in documentaries. Some people are really excited to be on camera. Right. Other people take a little more convincing. Some people just don't want anything to do with you. Some people, I think, you know, when we told them we were making a film about General Tso's chicken, they looked at us with raised eyebrows, um, yes. understandably. Um, others immediately understood what we were after, and others were just, yeah, I'm, I'm game to tell you my story. And that, that's how the film evolved, really, mm -hmm. is, you know, sure, we wanted to ask people about General Tso's chicken and their recipes and their theories of the origins of the dish, but ultimately we were trying to understand this phenomenon of Chinese food mm -hmm. um, and how it came to be that, you know, every tiny town, drive across the country, has a Chinese restaurant. Like, right. What's the deal? Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, uh, from your perspective, why, why, why were the Chinese uh, very successful in um, migrating from San Francisco to the eastern seaboard, like uh, cities like New York, what, uh, um, was it because the Chinese food, or was it uh, something else? What was the, what was the sort of like, what was the eastern seaboard uh, looking for? Well, food certainly played a, a role in helping the Chinese, who really were forced out of many other professions on the west coast. In the, wake of the gold rush and the mm -hmm. building of the railroad. Um, there's a lot of discrimination and um, repression. So food became kind of a way in um, because, uh, especially for the men, you know, cooking and the preparing, preparation of food was seen as women's work. So mm -hmm. it was kind of non-threatening. Um, mm -hmm. And they, these immigrants were incredibly entrepreneurial. So as they head out, headed out across the country, um, staking out turf in different towns, they, um, you know, sacrificed the community of being in a large city right. for the um, for the uh, ability to have your own shop in an area where you wouldn't be competing with other Chinese families. Right. And eventually, you know, through adapting the foods that they brought with them to local tastes, there was this interesting exchange that went on. So, mm -hmm. on the one hand, they were introducing, you know white Americans or European Americans to Chinese food. On the other hand, they were also incorporating some local cuisines into their dishes. Mm -hmm. So what, it, what you end up with is kind of an entirely new cuisine. And right. it's different you know, all around the country, East Coast versus Southwest versus the South. Mm -hmm. Now tell us what uh, all the viewers who come see the film uh, what would you like them to learn about the film, or what kind of message do you, would you want to relate to your uh, viewers? On the one hand, I hope the film is um, is entertaining, and that it's a entertaining detective story, a little bit of a mystery of who was General So, and, and really where did this dish originate? Um, so I, I, I like the idea of just getting wrapped up in that and enjoying it as a film. Of course, though, um, as we were making the film, we realized there was a lot of really important stories here that, that aren't really a part of the, the narrative, the, you know, the American narrative of, of how this country came to be. So mm -hmm. I do hope people come away with a much better appreciation of all of the struggles and discrimination that Chinese immigrants have faced over the years and really continue to face so mm -hmm. that you know, when we stop in for takeout at a Chinese restaurant, or really at any restaurant, um, we 
pause and think, you know, this family has a story and a journey, mm -hmm. and just as this food has a story and a journey right. and a history. Um, and um, I think that enriches our our culinary experiences, but also, also our, our cultural experiences. Absolutely, absolutely. So can you tell our viewers uh, where is the best General Show chicken that you've tried? <laughs> <laughs> Best General Tso's chicken I've tried is in Taipei, Taiwan, um, where the man who invented the dish in the 1950s still makes it with his family. Um, so it's worth the trek. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I uh, hope to uh, t hope for us to talk to us again uh, for any upcoming projects, of course. Thanks a lot. Thank Sounds you. Great. Thank you.